If you will, please stand for our responsive reading this morning, which will be on page 246, and then we'll sing 247. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. to come last Sunday night. Hey, wasn't that wonderful? Amen. And then, uh, it's also on YouTube, so uh, if you've got some folks you'd like to share that with, I got a chance to listen to it again the other day, and it's just fantastic. So again, thank you, choir. Y'all did a wonderful job. Joy, and everybody would just just a wonderful, wonderful job. We appreciate it so very, very much. Well, good morning and hope that you are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he alone is worthy of everything we have. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So we worship him. BJ, will you come lead us as we pray, please? Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, Lord, giving you many thanks for each and everything that happens in our lives, Lord, we just, we just thank you for that. Lord, as we come into this season, Lord, we want to thank you for giving us your son. That one day he may die on the cross for our sins, Lord. That's the ultimate gift that we receive. And Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, be with us now as we go through the rest of this service. Be with the choirs that bring us special music this morning, Lord. And Lord, be with Scott as he brings the word. And Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as their Savior, let today be the greatest day that they could have in their life by accepting you. Go with us now. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. If you will, please stand and turn to hymn number 251. It came upon a midnight clear. We'll sing verses 1 two and four. <clears throat>
good this morning. Let's turn to hymn number 265, The First Noel. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6.
thank you so much. What a joy to be able to hear the beautiful music of Christmas. Amen. Y'all wait. Sorry. <laughs> this morning, I want us to, to look in the, actually, we want to look in two chapters this morning. The first one I want us to look at is in Matthew chapter number one. It should be on the screen. And I'm going to ask if you will, please, to stand for the reading of God's word. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, or privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for what is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Father, I thank you today for your word. And Father, I pray that you'll speak to us, Lord, that you'll give me the words that we need to hear so that we can praise and worship and adore the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you for this special birth of our Lord and Savior. We ask these things now in Jesus' name and for his sake. When you look at the scripture we've seen this morning, something just jumps out at you. That there is something different about this birth. This was no ordinary birth. It was a supernatural birth. We call it the virgin birth. And that's what I want us to look at this morning. And we're going to look at three different situations this morning. We're going to look at when God spoke to Mary, when she spoke to Joseph, and how he speaks to the world, and the answer that he gives to these three dilemmas is the virgin birth, that supernatural act that happened over 2,000 years ago. There are people today who mock the virgin birth. And they say that it could not happen. It cannot happen. Well, the person only has to know and believe the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, God. I want us to look for just a moment. If you have your Bible, turn over to look at the book of Luke because it gives us, I want to, before I come back to Matthew, I want to look in Luke for just a moment because the, it's amazing how uh, Joy picks out these songs, and, and they just go exactly with what I'm speaking of. That's a God thing, folks, and I appreciate that. Now, in Luke chapter number one, you find the story of how the angel comes and speaks to Mary. Chapter one, verse 26, listen to what it says. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee, and blessed are those among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this might be. Now, can you imagine 
here is Mary, and all of a sudden, an angel appears. And he says to Mary, you are highly favored. Now, folks, I've never seen an angel, and I think it would scare me to death if I saw one. Now, here's Mary, and the scripture says she's troubled by this appearance of this angel. And she's troubled and she's wondering what in the world is going on. And he begins to tell her the plan of God. He says to her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. And he describes his ministry. He shall be great, shall be called the son of the highest, the Lord God, and shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary says, I don't get it. I don't understand. She's got a dilemma. How is this going to take place? Now, you remember that an angel had also spoken to a priest and told him he was going to have a son, but he didn't believe it. He didn't believe God, but this isn't the case here. Mary says, how's it going to happen? I'm not Mary. I haven't had relations with anyone. How is this going to happen? So there's a dilemma. How's it going to be? What's the answer? And the angel begins to tell her what God is going to do. And he tells her, he said, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you, and there also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And the angel says to her, for with God nothing is impossible. Now folks, we, can't, we don't know everything there is about the virgin birth. We don't know all there is about God. But the Lord said, this is how it's going to take place. As a matter of fact, it had already been predicted in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The Lord will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel, which is God with us. God had a plan. God had a plan to bring his son into the world. Did Mary understand everything? No. We don't understand everything about the virgin birth. But you see, it is one of the foundational truths of the scripture. Because if you take the virgin birth out of the scripture... You don't have a Savior. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But understand, here's Mary. The angel has spoken to her. The angel has said, you're going to have a son. And God's going to be in it. And the angel said, with God, nothing is impossible. And notice Mary's response. She said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed. She didn't argue with God. She didn't say, Well, what about this and what about that? In simple faith, she believed what God said. And it was because of the virgin birth. Because God was going to do something that was supernatural. Now Mary had to deal with a lot of things because 
she is engaged to Joseph. And in the passage we read above it, it talks about the genealogy of Jesus. You say, well, what's the big deal? Well, if you, you read it, here's what you'd find from verse 1 on. It's in so-and-so begot so-and-so, and so-and-so begot so-and-so. And when it comes down to verse 16, it says, And Jacob begat Joseph. And he puts in there the husband of Mary. You see that? What's he trying to say to us? That Joseph is not the father of Jesus. He made it a point for us to understand that a supernatural birth was going to take place. And it was imperative that this supernatural birth, this virgin birth, take place. And so he, he goes on to say that the birth of Jesus was like this. His mother was a spouse to Joseph. Now I want you to think about Joseph for just a moment. Because here is Joseph. He is engaged to Mary. And when you begin to understand the historical Jewish setting of a wedding, it begins to shed some light on what's taken place. It was actually three stages in a Jewish wedding. And the first one was the engagement period. And many times what would take place is the mother and dad would arrange the marriage. And this could be when the kids were children. And the children had no say-so in what was going to take place. Now sometimes that might be a good thing today, amen? But listen, that was the engagement period. And then when they got older, they were called the betrothal period. And this lasted about a year. Now, during this stage, they were considered husband and wife. Now, they had not joined together, but they were considered by Jewish law husband and wife. And this explains Joseph's dilemma about what's going to take place. Because now Joseph finds out Mary is pregnant. Now can you imagine what's going to go through his head? I've been engaged to this woman from childhood. And now we're getting ready to get married. And all of a sudden she's pregnant. You think that might be an issue? Yeah, it was. And so, here's Joseph. What am I going to do? How am I going to handle it? What, what do I do in this situation? And notice what takes place. He said, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man or a righteous man, decided not to do it publicly. Because the way it worked is that if this was found out, they would make it public. And the stoning, I mean, the, the penalty could be as severe, severe as stoning the woman. But Joseph was a just man. He loved Mary, and he wasn't going to do that. And the scripture says that while he was thinking about what he was going to do, a dilemma. How, how do I handle this? How do I be a righteous man and love God and, and love this woman who I, I'm I found out she's going to have a baby, and it's not mine. How do I deal with it? See, that, see the dilemma he was under? And the scripture says that while he thought on those things, an angel appeared unto him. And the angel began to explain to Joseph what was going on. Joseph this is the plan of God. God is doing something in Mary. 
Mary is going to have a baby. It's not yours, but it, this child has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, probably Joseph's going, I don't understand that either. Would you? It'd be a dilemma, wouldn't it? But what does God say through the angel to him? He points him back to the scripture. He points him back to the prophecy of Isaiah. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. And that was enough for Joseph. Because God had said to him through the angel Gabriel, Joseph, this is of God. This is something that's going to change the world. Because this woman is going to have a child. It's not going to have an earthly father. It's going to have a heavenly father. And we're, it's going to be, you're going to call his name Jesus or Joshua, salvation. You're going to call him Christ, which is the Messiah. You're going to call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So now God's plan that he had planned from all of eternity is going to take place. Why? Because of the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's God's answer to man. Because here's man. Man's got a problem. Man's got a sin problem. Remember what happened in the garden? Adam and Eve, sin. Children, sin. And no longer is man in the image of God. If you go back to Genesis, what you'd find is when Adam had the next child, it was in Adam's image. So man's got a problem. Man has now has a sin nature. And how in the world is God going to resolve this issue of sin? If you have two human parents, you've just got another human being. Still got a sin nature. If there was a way to make two gods, you just have God. That's all you'd have. But God in his infinite Wisdom said, here's how it's going to take place. There's going to be a virgin. And the Holy Spirit of God is going to come upon her. And she's going to be with child. And she's going to bring forth a child. This child that is 100% man, but at the same time, a hundred percent God, the virgin birth. There's no other explanation to how God could bring about this dilemma that man has, this sin problem. So God's answer to mankind is the virgin birth. If you take the virgin birth out of Christmas, you don't have any Christmas. You don't have a Savior. You don't have anybody that can deal with the sin problem. And that's why Jesus came. That's what he said, you shall call his name Jesus. Salvation, that's what it means. That God, is, through his son, is going to bring salvation to all of the world. Folks, there was no other way except through the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And people say, well, it's not a big deal. Folks, it is a big deal. Because if the virgin birth did not take place, we are still in our sin. We are still lost. We have no hope of heaven if it was just a birth like any other birth. But thank God, 
Thank God that he spoke and he brought about the Lord Jesus Christ. Here at Christmas, when we, we think about this birth of this child, we think about what he will do because this little baby one day will heal the sick, he'll raise the dead, he'll cause the dumb to speak. That's who he is. But one day, he will go to the cross. And as the scripture says concerning Mary, Mary, you're going to have a sword in your heart. Yes, you are the mother of the Messiah, but you're going to pay a price because you're going to watch that child be rejected. You're going to watch that child grow up. You're going to watch your child go to the cross and bleed and die for the sin of the world because that's how God has planned it. The virgin birth. There is no other explanation for salvation, folks. There is no other way. From eternity past, God has said, this is how it's going to be. Aren't you thankful today that God had a plan? A plan that we can't really explain. You know, you don't have to understand something to believe it. I mean, anybody here, or there's probably some of you here, knows how, the, how an airplane gets off the ground. That's just amazing to me how something that big can get off the ground. Anybody know how electricity works? Just turn the switch on, right? That's what I do. I don't understand it. But I believe it works. See, it's the virgin birth that the scripture speaks about. That tells us that God has a plan. That God had a plan for Joseph. It was the answer to his dilemma. The virgin birth was an answer to Mary's dilemma. The virgin birth is an answer to our dilemma. Because the Son of God came to take our place. To die on the cross so that we might have life and life everlasting. That's why he came. The virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a Savior. What a God. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation hymn. The invitation is very, very simple. God had a plan through Jesus. He brought forth the Son so that the Son could go to the cross to die. For you and for me. And when we come to him, we come just like we are. You can't get good enough to go to heaven. You know that? You, you can't work your way to heaven. There, there are religions that say, well, you know, you can, you, you can have Jesus, but you've got to do this and this and this. Well, folks, that, that's not grace. That's works. See, if you add anything to Jesus, it becomes a work. And it's no longer grace. Grace is what God gives us that we don't deserve. None of us deserve grace. But yet God, in his mercy, has extended grace to you and I. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the gift of Christmas. It's really the gift that keeps on giving for all of eternity, folks. He says when we come to him, paid in full. Nothing else. No more. You don't have to work. You believe in what Jesus did on the cross. 
that he died in your place, that he died in my place. And if I will confess my sin and I will surrender my heart to him, he will save me. That's the good news of Christmas. But it came through the virgin birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's stand and pray. Father, I thank you today for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that you made a way for us through the cross. Father, I thank you that your plan is so simple that all, all we have to do is just believe, to trust you, to turn our lives to you. Father, there might be somebody here this morning and they've never trusted you. They've never received you. Father, would you speak to that heart this morning? Lord, you help them to know how precious they are in your sight. Because you love them so much. If they would have been the only one here, you would have come. The Lord Jesus would have come and died for that person. Lord, we love you today. Father, speak to us, encourage us. Lord, there may be others who need to come for other decisions. Father, speak to us. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. Father, we ask these things now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. There are decisions that you need to make this morning. You come as we sing. couple prayer requests. First of all, the family of J.T. Simpson. Also, I've got two friends who uh, have passed away. Uh, one of them is a pastor friend of mine. His name is Dennis Richards. Uh, if you please pray for that family. And also, uh, Dave Abernathy Jr. Uh, his, he passed away, and I did his uh, mother's funeral in March, and they lost a, another a sibling a couple few years ago, so 
please be praying for these families. A uh, couple quick announcements. Uh, pulpit, I'm going to need to meet for just a moment down here, and I need to see the business for about two, three minutes back in my office. Uh, Cindy's, mom. Cindy's mom is doing great. Yep, everything went well. Okay. Any other uh, requests before we pray? It's not the one you're thinking of. This is a, uh, a friend of mine from the last church. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Janice, for your help. You're very welcome. Okay. Okay. Cliff, Gammon, family, and John. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. Lord, for the virgin birth. Lord, what a blessing it is to us something that took place several thousand years ago still has implications today for the way we live father we thank you for that lord we lift up these ones who've been mentioned father you know all the the needs the requests father we pray that you'd be with these families especially who've lost loved ones especially during this Christmas season. Father, I pray that, Lord, you would minister to them in a way that only you can. Father, I thank you and praise you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think you probably know, saw on the screen there's no services the next two Wednesday nights.